And, you know, we always get a lot of questions from new growers about flytrap dormancy. I think people who aren't familiar with flytraps uh, expect them to be kind of tropical plants and not to be able to be outside. So this is your first winter growing a flytrap. I wanted to show you what they should look like around this time of year. Uh, I've said in previous videos, we're in late November right now. This is the day before Thanksgiving. Um, and we've had a couple of light frosts kind of dipping into the 30s, but nothing really deep. Actually, next week, we're about to get our first kind of 20 uh first frost down into the 20s so this is what your fly traps should look like you can see most of the summer leaves have turned black but if you look down at the base of the plant they're all still healthy and alive different plants will show different uh traits some of them will look better this time of year and still have more going on for them and some will look you know almost all black like here's one but you know if you weed through all these black leaves you can still see nice green leaves there at the base if you're worried about your plant you always just want to look at the base and look for a nice firm actively growing base and as long as you've got that you're good to go I'm trying to find one that might be a good example of kind of something that might be a little bit more uh, concerning that is still alive so again this is covered in all black leaves but if you go down near the base you can still see it's alive same kind of story over here. It's mostly dead, right? Nope, it's alive. It's just going dormant, getting ready for its winter rest. So it can come back strong next spring. So if you have fly traps, this is what they're kind of expected to look like this time of year. So don't panic too bad. And if you have sundews that are temperate as well and go dormant, uh, they will look even worse. So they look like that. Just this little nub. And they'll stay like that all the way until spring. And it's really cool when they wake up in the spring and put out those first leaves. Uh, but almost impossible to see if you don't know what you're looking for, or if you didn't know it was in that pot. So don't worry if you have sundews, they will come back as well. They just really kind of hide out for the winter uh, and can be tough to see. Okay, and as a kind of fast follow up to that fly trap dormancy video, we're actually uh, about a week later. Thank goodness for my procrastination, but we had our first night into the 20s uh, last night. And so what you can see, these are the same fly traps that were out there, but you know they had some green, nice summer traps. This is frost damage. So these leaves are all frost damaged. They're not gonna recover from this. You can see kind of how they get kind of dark and speckled when the cells expand, when they freeze and then thaw out during the daytime. So those are gonna go away, uh, but still, healthy plants down here at the base. Here's another one, these are all left out. I believe the lowest we touched looks like was 26 last night, uh, which is cold for us, but not, you know, uh, out of the ordinary or anything extraordinary. We, we get those freezes every year. Here's the other one, Chinese dumpling. It looked pretty nice in the last video, but now those kind of nicer traps are uh, frost damaged, probably on their way out, uh, but the plant's still plenty healthy, just gonna grow kind of this clustered winter growth for the remainder of the winter. It'll kind of bundle down in here nice and tight. Everything will stay low to the ground, away from kind of the freezing air, and uh, they'll be ready to grow back next spring. But this is what they'll look like after a nice hard freeze. Okay, and I don't know how the uh, lighting is gonna hold up here, but I thought I would walk you through a fly trap repotting while I'm at it. <clears throat> I'm going through repotting my collection right now, so thought it'd be helpful. So similar to if you've watched some of my Saracenia videos earlier, first thing you're gonna wanna do this is A2, it's a nice big fly trap filled in this three and a half inch pot, uh, is go through and weed and pull off all the dead stuff. So you can get a nice clear view of everything. So I'm gonna go in and just kind of yank these out. I get these grasses that put up these long blooms. They're short rooted, but they are a little bit annoying. They stick up and kind of make everything look weedy and messy during the growing season. I did try and do my best this season to cut down on this as much as possible, but uh, they just have fully established themselves in there, so it's nearly impossible to get rid of them altogether. But next year, I'm going to try and do even better and just kind of chip away so there's less weeds when I'm doing this next year. So now that I've done this, you can see pretty clean. A lot of people ask me how I propagate fly traps. The answer is I, I let them kind of propagate themselves. You can definitely take uh, leaf cuttings. You can do it that way. You can do stem cuttings from flowers. I grow a lot from seed too, just because that's fun and a way to create genetically unique uh, fly traps. But if you grow them happily in these deep pots, uh, after a year, they will fill in if you have mature plants in no time. So 
<clears throat> this is how I create a lot of my sales stock, how I create extra cultivars for friends that are, are looking for something when they come out to visit. Uh, this was one to two large plants last year when I repotted this. So if I squeeze this out of this three and a half inch pot, and you can see the good thing about fly traps is their roots are fairly sturdy and fairly small. Um, so when you get it like that, you can just kind of divide it to open things up. So I'm going to take half of this and just kind of put it to the side so I can show you the rest. This looks to be the main plant here and you can see the root structure here. One thing I am going to do as the plant has grown, it's grown in this direction. Uh, so back here, this is just dead rhizome or bulb or whatever you call it for a fly trap. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and peel that off because I don't want all that dead tissue just right up next to the plant. Nice way to clean things up. Uh, but if this were white, like you can see kind of some of these leaf sections here, you could divide this. So I could take this if I wanted to, let me see if you can see it and snap that off. And even though there's no growing point, if I planted that, it's likely to develop a new growing point, And that's a good way you can propagate. This was accidental. I just pulled a, a leaf off and it took a section with it. You could also try and root that. The best way I've found to do that is in straight water. Uh, but you can also use really damp sphagnum. You just want to keep it really wet and humid. But there's one mature plant there. We'll see how many we get out of here. Here's decent size, kind of medium. Two of them can tease apart, so we're up to two, three. I apologize, I've got a little cold, so if I sound a little nasally, that's why. So here's number four, just on this half of the pot. I always get a lot of these really tiny babies too, to start out small plants. So there's five, that's a smaller one. Here's a really tiny baby, if you can see that. I guess technically that's six, but I'm not gonna count that. We'll stay at five. And last big one in here. Go ahead and put that to the side. Uh, so what's that, six, seven. Come back to this other one. Looks like a couple of plants in here. Eight, nine, some extra babies too. This is A2, so this is a sibling of, uh, of B52, the giant clone. And so there's 10. So there's 10 decent sized divisions in here, along with, I don't know, probably an extra 10 little tiny babies. And we'll see if I even want to bother planting those up. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, to be honest. If you do want to maximize plants and have as much as possible, you certainly can. Uh, they'll just take a long time to kind of grow out and reach a decent size. But that one pot, I started two mature plants last season. Now I've got 10 decent sized ones that I can repot into separate pots and have even more for next year. So super easy. That's why repotting is a pretty exciting time of year for fly traps because you get to see kind of your harvest uh, in terms of how many you've created. But really easy. Um, like I said, super easy to repot too. So you'll just fill up soil, stick this in here, put it in here. I usually do two mature plants in this three and a half inch pot for my mother plants. That's to give me a nice full display. Uh, you can certainly do one to a pot as well. I wouldn't put more than two in here though, because it will get kind of crowded. You can see how they like to divide and creep. And if I try to put three or four plants in here, it will get crowded really fast once they start growing. Uh, and that might lead to bad things for the fly trap, like rot or disease or any number of other things. Plants will just end up shaded and not in the best health. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Thought it was uh, important to include that in our kind of dormancy video. So if you're repotting, that's what you should be looking for. Thanks for watching.